Hello ladies and gentlemen, Q here and welcome to the third and final tutorial video on using Mug Hunter and Gulf Scripts for your VXA RPG game. Um, this is the third part so if you haven't seen the previous videos you might want to go back and look at them. Links down below. And as always let's go ahead and start with a sort of review of what we've done so far here we have the project data for our game and I will assume that you've already made a game with maps and events and so on so let's go ahead and make again a map here whatever and an event and of course in your game you'll have a lot more events than just one battle but for what we're trying to do is just edit the battle system with custom stuff this should be more than enough right so we begin by going into the animated battlers we copy all those graphics and if you will remember you can also use any of the holder animated battlers we go over that on the second folder and for the heads up display you also want to copy in the graphics link to Mug Hunter heads up displays below, and we went over them on the first video. On the first and second video, we used a different heads up display for this third one to show that you can use different heads up displays. Indeed, we will be using Model 15 Gaia. All right. So now we have our project, and we are going to quickly copy the script that we need for the animated battlers. We copy that and we put it into our project. Again I'm going over this real quickly because this is just a review if you want to see a more thorough explanation of what I'm doing here then you can go back to the first and second videos. and 240 and close that we open up the Gaia I believe that we have already and so in this case we're not going to copy the ATB Chala we're going to be adding the ATB from another script and the reason that I will be using another ATB model rather than Chala is to show you guys that it doesn't really matter whether you use the Chala ATB gauge or the Atelier ATB gauge or some other ATB gauge that you might find elsewhere again the functionality is the same in terms of how they work within your game and again if you haven't seen the second video you might be a bit lost so that's quite alright just go back to the second video and um, you'll see what I just did let's go ahead and make sure that we did indeed copy the graphics indeed we did so just don't copy right so we can now do over that. We'll go back here. We forgot the tags for the characters. And if you have no idea what the tags for the characters are, again, you may want to go back to the first video. This is just kind of a review. So if you've watched the other videos, or if you're familiar with the scripts, indeed, you may very well be able to follow what I'm doing here. Right? So we'll copy the Spear woman tag into the characters. What I'm doing right now, remember the Golf Butler script functions via tags in the character notes. So when you write down that Terence, for example, will be using the Swordsman Butler, it will tell the system to look into the graphics battle folder and use the referring image go ahead and apply and so far what we have done is 
apply a heads up display and custom battle characters to our game. We didn't put any to the enemies, but that's really quite all right for now. I'm just making sure that it does indeed work. Maybe we do want to give our enemies tags. So let's go ahead and do likewise with our slime in enemies and with our bat copy and we are now done franken spriting the first and second stages of our battle system let's go ahead and just kind of rearrange these sprites put a bat up here apply we're good to go alright so ladies and gentlemen we have caught up with what we've done in the previous two videos don't care for that uh, what I'm gonna do now is we're going to add the HB gauge for the Arton Helico series All right, and what this does if you remember the previous video in the battle system we had on the top right a action gauge action time gauge that was circular this time around we'll be using a horizontal one so we just go ahead and copy the required the required scripts these scripts by the way for the ATV Ayesha bar that we will be using can be found again in the mug Hunter HUD pack, which I have linked below. Um, I think that uh, most of the configuration here is fairly self explanatory, by the way. Um, if you have been with me on the first two tutorials, you should really be able to understand what's going on here. It's pretty much the same principle. We do need the visuals so you'll find that on HUD 12 Tayo so let's go ahead and copy this graphics over to our project if you will remember yes copy the folders but no do not copy the bars um, actually we, we may have to copy some of them indeed uh, let's see if that's correct uh, we may have to overwrite some. Oh no, we don't. We have the Ayesha HUD. And what we've done is we've added the functionality of a action battle system. Instead of using the round Shala system, we have this slightly nicer looking, I think, system that kind of imitates Atelier Ayesha. Alright, so we'll go ahead and add more characters to our party. I always forget to do that. So here we go, Natalie turns and Ernest. Alright, and we're gonna go ahead and go to the Atelier script. It's not the script over here. And if you remember the bar that we just saw was vertical, maybe we want it to be horizontal, so we go to mod underscore ATB underscore Aisha. We set it to horizontal. It should be somewhere around here. Here we go. Gauge type zero vertical, one for horizontal. We set it to horizontal. We go ahead and show that looks like now. And here you see a different configuration with a different HUD. Right, we still have the HUD, we have the custom face. If you guys go to the second video, you will remember how to customize the art and so on. So we go ahead and save this. And what we're going to do now is add the final bells and whistles to your system. Right, We've taken your game that you've already prepared or maybe you haven't even started and you want to set up a new system. And now we're going to add um nicer battle backgrounds what you've noticed so far is that all the battle backgrounds are pretty much static 
What you want to do to add animations to them is you want to get the Mug Hunter Battle Back pack. You want to copy all of those graphics. Again, graphics really important. So yes, and no, we do not want to overwrite anything. Go ahead and open this up, and you're going to need two major scripts and the entire map from this little engine, right? The two major ones that you'll need are the Battleback EX. This is what tells the system in your project which images to look for. Right, so we go ahead and paste that. And you are also going to need the Weather EX. This is what animates the background of your battle stages, right? Again, configuration, it's, it's very well documented, it's fairly self-explanatory. If you've been with me in the previous videos, you should be able to uh, kind of understand how this works without a lot of explanation. And you do want the map. Right? For this script, the map is of utmost importance. The reason being... that the battles here are you know the backgrounds are called via script so let's go ahead and start the player position here and if you'll notice each of these images has a each of these events has a different script so be clear and this is calling blue sky ocean and beach if we look at a different one this one is calling uh, the woods the fog and so on and let's go ahead and look at what we've just done. All right, what we've done is again set up a number of different animated backgrounds for your battle system. Now you notice that the ocean is moving back and forth. You'll see that the sky is moving. Uh, let's just go ahead and try to escape this battle. I wonder if we started to escape. If we look at this one, we'll see a different setting. You'll see that we are behind the mountain, so you it may behoove you to kind of play around with the coordinates of the animated battlers in the GALF script. Just go ahead and be done with that battle. But we do see kind of like the fog in the clouds. We go to the... let's just go down here. I think this one was a nice one. Right. We have the desert, we have the clouds rolling around and so on, and that's basically what we've done here in this situation. We've added animated backgrounds to your flight scenes, right? So we have the custom HUD with all the nice menus. We have the animated characters here on the left and right. We have an active time system. We have the active time gauge, and we have the animated background, which is, well, I should say, drastically different from the kind of standard battle. Let me go ahead and pull up a standard battle to show you what this looks like side by side. I don't have anything here. I'm looking for the game engines folder. And here we go. Let's just open up a new one. We call this one Project 12. Let's throw some ground in here for Eric to move on. And let's set up an event with a battle system here and here. Battle processing, okay. Go ahead and run that. And I think maybe I do want to mute the entire audio. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to close this. That's this is what we've done so far in a short 15 minutes. Right Over here we have what the normal battle looks like. All right. So there you have the differences. Right Up here we have what we've customized. Down here we have the original version. All right. So that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series, and I will see you next time for whatever I might come up with that I think I might share, or if you guys have any requests for 
tutorials or if you're curious about scripts or anything like that feel free to let me know and I'll be more than happy to dig a little bit and share what I find with you alright so I will see you next time